All right, so this is gonna be about online bidding techniques, okay? Now this is basically different ways that you can bid, tips or tricks, different things that I use when I buy storage units online. And believe me, um, I have bought hundreds of storage units from storage treasures and other sites. I buy a lot online. Now, before we go any further, there's not a lot of techniques that I use because there's so many aspects that you're missing when you buy online versus live. Live, you can see who you're bidding against, completely different scenario. Online is a little bit differently. And I'll kind of explain the process as best as I possibly can. So um, when I buy storage units online, we'll go for the first thing is I am very aggressive. I'm an aggressive bidder, both online and live. I'm just known for being really aggressive. And what does that mean? I like to kind of throw people off with jumping the bid and we'll kind of go over a few things and, and go over some tips and tricks around that. Um, now this style may not be best for everybody, and you've got to be very careful and make sure that you budget, meaning when you either buy online or you go live, you have a certain amount that's your max amount that you're willing to spend. So that way you don't go over it and go over budget and um, your emotions don't get the best of you when you're bidding. So let's go ahead and use this as an example. Uh, we're at, <coughs> excuse me, <coughs> we're at Northwest Self Storage here in Tualatin, which is kind of close to my house. This is a storage unit that I've been eyeballing. It's a pretty big one, actually. It's a 10 by 10, so it would require a lot of work. It is in Tualatin, which is not too far from me. I think it's a good unit. Now, um, I will bid on this live right now with you. A couple tips here when we'll go to the, uh, we'll go to the first tip is the way that most online sites work is there's $10 increments. So it's at 110 now. I'm not the high bidder. Somebody else is. And um, what you can do is you can bid in, in $10 increments. Um, you can also set your max amount, and we'll kind of go over that in a second. But for the purpose of this, the reason I do not bid in $10 increments, so let's say I bid 120 here, and let's go ahead and confirm it. So what, what do you see here? Again, you are not the high bidder, right? The reason I don't bid $10 at a time is because it's set up to get as much money for these storage units as possible. And, and when you bid $10 at a time, it, it's only another $10 in your mind. It's only another $10. You and the other person and the other people that are bidding are thinking in their mind, okay, it's only an extra $10. It's only another extra $10, right? What's the problem with that? The problem with that is the bid I find go the bid prices go higher because you know I bid 120, he bids 130, I bid 140. It's just ten dollars doesn't seem like a lot of money, and then soon you're looking at a three or four hundred dollar storage locker because each of us are bidding ten dollars at a time. So the first tip that I have here is I don't like to bid ten dollars at a time. I like to throw a max bid out. So for example. If I'm willing to spend $200 on this unit, I will literally put $200 in here and bid 200. And what happens here is you notice that it's basically, and here's the tip, you notice that it's at $130 right now. You just seen me bid 200. Now if this auction ended today, I would not pay 200, I would only pay 130, but if this bidder comes back and he bids 140, 150, 160, I'm still gonna be the high bidder because I set my max amount at $200. And the reason I do that is psychological. I want every time that person puts in an extra $10 or an extra $20, I want them to, I want them to see that they're not the winner. And for, uh, for the reason is, is I want them to like think about how much money they're spending, right? Um, also, another tip, guys, is let's say I do bid $10 at a time, they bid $10 at a time, that becomes a battle. I do not want to be in a battle because that means that they may be getting emotional and bidding more than they should. And I don't want to be, I, the idea here is to get the cheapest storage units as you possibly can. So you want to avoid sometimes being in battles with people online. And I feel like a good way of avoiding the battle is to put a max bid out there. So every time they bid, a message pops up and it says they're not the high bidder. Because at that point, they know that they're still not the high bidder and they're not bidding against somebody per se $10 increments. They know that I set my max amount high. 
but they don't know what that max amount is. Hopefully that makes sense. So I guess the this is a really hard video to do because it's um, it, it at the end of the day, it just depends on your style and as you do it. But I like to find, look at storage units, find the best possible stuff I like in it, find out how much I want to spend on it, put the maximum amount in there. So that way we're not going back and forth with $10. And on top of that, it kind of deters them because they think twice, okay, I'm going to bid 150. What if his max is like 160 and then I'm stuck with the storage unit and I overpaid, right? I don't want to get in those battles of this $10. Um, so that's kind of one tip guys is try to stay away from those battles. That's why I feel like it's best to set a maximum amount. And also let's go on to my next tip. And my next tip here is sometimes people don't want to spend over round numbers. Like for example, hundred, uh, or excuse me, 200, 300, 400, 500, right? Those numbers seem like a lot of money when you get into the hundreds. When you're anything low, lower than that, like like let's say 160, 170, 180, those don't seem as high as 200, 300, right? So the way that I like to do it is instead of doing 200, I'll do 210 because a lot of people will stop at 200. And, and instead of doing 300, I'll do 310 because a lot of people will stop at 300. And the same thing with 400 and 500. Always add an extra $10 to that because you'll find that once people get to that magic number of two, three, four, five hundred dollars, they'll stop. But if you add that extra $10, um, you're still the winner because they'll probably stop at 400. That's just how our brains work. A lot of people just will do round numbers like that. So two, three, four, five hundred dollars, right? So I always add in my bids an extra $10. So that way, um, a lot of times they'll stop at two and I'll still win the storage unit and only cost me an extra 10 bucks, okay? So those are two tips. Avoid the $10 battles. Put your maximum amount out there. Um, always do $10 over the uh, amount that you're spending. Uh, if it's gonna be over two, three, four, five, six hundred dollars $600 or more. Now, another tip that I have is for sites like Locker Fox. Okay, now this is kind of a pro tip. A lot of people don't do this. So as you notice, storage treasures, I have no idea who I'm bidding against, okay? I don't know who I'm bidding against. I can't see who's bidding. There's no indication of that. But there's a lot of sites that you can see who you're bidding against, like Locker Fox and other sites that I, we went over, right? Now, I just told you to stay away from battles, and this this site locker fox and some of the other sites welcomes battles because they want the reason they put this here is because they want you to see who you're bidding against so that way there becomes that battle that back and forth and the price of the storage units go higher okay so i like to avoid these battles now one way that i avoid these battles on sites like locker fox and other sites is i create two accounts so i have two locker fox accounts one under me, one under my wife, okay? There's a reason why I do this, okay? I create two different accounts because what happens is, is after a while, after I've been using the site for a couple months, people will recognize my name. And not just Wade's Ventures, but any name you create, they'll recognize the name and they may remember if you got, uh, if they got overbid by you. They re may remember that you battled with them in the past and they get emotional. All of us sometimes get emotional and they remember that name. They'll see that name, you know, Miss, man, she ran me up on a storage unit a couple months ago. I'm gonna get her this time, right? And so what I'd like to do is I create two different accounts, one under me, one under my wife. So that way, after a while, after using one account, I'll switch to the other account so that people see a different username. Once they see a different username, then they, they won't remember the previous battles that we've had on some of the other storage units. And the price, the, the, the locker may go lower because there isn't that back and forth, okay? So that's a tip I'm hopefully you guys have thought of. Create two different accounts on the sites like this that you can physically see who you're bidding against. So that way every once in a while, switch it up and go on the other account 
so that way you don't necessarily have to get in that battle and you may get cheaper units okay the idea here is I like to be as, as aggressive as possible online I like to kind of you know hit them where it hurts early on and kind of see if they back off and so let me go over another tip for you guys um, now this one is up in the air it's very situational based but I'll try to do as best I possibly can explaining this technique so let's go to a storage unit that um, I'm possibly interested in here it's tough because I actually haven't looked into any of these maybe I won't actually place the bid on it but just look at it okay so let's let's click this for example this Portland one um, so what it's at $90 right now it's still got two days left now what a lot of people will do is they'll wait for the last hour that's when you get the majority of the bidding online is when you wait for the last hour to you know half an hour even up until the few seconds that the bid closes now remember they have soft close on these auctions so let's say that there's three minutes left in this auction and I bid a hundred dollars thinking I'm gonna snipe the unit you know get it in the last few seconds it doesn't work like that way because what happens is storage treasures adds another three minutes to make sure that everybody else has the opportunity to bid on this storage unit okay so you can't snipe auctions online you can't bid the last second and hopefully get the storage unit. It doesn't work like that because the site will add another three minutes on, okay? Now, the, the tip I have here though is simply put, there's two days left. What a lot of people will do is they'll wait for the last hour, the last half an hour to bid on the units that they, that they want. I don't do that. If I like a unit, even if it's four days out, I'll bid my maximum amount or maybe a little under my maximum amount. So if my maximum amount is $300 on this unit, I'll bid, let's say 250, even if it's five days out. The reason I do that is because I, I wanna basically cut the amount of time between the $90 to the $250, meaning I want everybody that's on a small budget to look at that 250 and be like, there's no way I'm touching that. You know, um, that's kind of my idea. So. I, I like to basically, even though they can't see that I bid my maximum amount of 250, when they do bid, they, they're not gonna get that winner up here. They're gonna get, oh, you need to bid more. You need to bid more. And, and hopefully that will deter a lot of people before the, the actual auction kind of gets into that you know last hour to last half an hour time frame. So that's kind of the idea, guys is when you bid on storage units, I like to bid my maximum amount right up front to kind of eliminate that back and forth of $10 because I feel like when you do the $10 every single time in those increments, the prices of them go higher because everybody's like, okay, it's a little over a Subway sandwich to bid another time. Remember, people are addicted. They want to buy these storage units. This is like sports betting or whatever the case may be. They're addicted. People are addicted to buying units and I want to kind of crush their dreams in the sense that I would put my maximum amount out there and then they, they bid in $10, $10, $10, and they, they're like, well, I'm not going to win it anyways because he has a maximum amount and I don't know what that is, so I'm going to stop before I overspend, okay? All right, so there's about four or five tips that With I that use. Said, <clears throat> let's go ahead and recap. The first thing I like to do is I, I like to avoid the back and forth, so I bid my maximum amount. Um, that's one of my techniques that I use and another technique I showed you guys is the online auctions um, create two different accounts so that way every once in a while you can use that other account and vice versa so people don't remember your username or change your username as some sites allow you to change it change your username so that way um, you know people don't remember who you are um, and then we went over a few more storage unit our storage treasures techniques that I use. This is kind of online bidding techniques, completely different animal than live. Hopefully that helps and see you on the next video.